Welcome back, everyone, to another exciting episode of the Toro Cigar Lounge podcast. I'm your host, Mike Glover, a.k.a. 757 Cigar Mike. Stay tuned today, ladies and gentlemen. You're not going to want to miss this show. It's a man show, and today we are responding to your comments, good, bad, and the ugly. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. In a world desperate to separate us by our differences, there's still a place where you can go where all are welcome. The Cigar Lounge. Welcome to the Toro Cigar Lounge Podcast. And we are back. Wow. Man show. Love man shows. Ready to go. Ready to go. Man show. Let's do it. We got a lot of good stuff to talk about. What do we want to talk about first, Ken? Well, well, let's uh, do, let's premiere our new advertisement for Family by Loyalty. This is the first time that our audience is going to be able to see this ad. Here we go. Family by Loyalty Cigars, where loyalty truly is thicker than blood. Our collection features bold, handcrafted cigars named after the legendary wolves of the Norse gods Freki, Gary, Fenrir, and Hattie. Each one is a tribute to the strength and courage of the wolves who inspired us. Whether you're unwinding with a Freki or attacking the night with Fenrir, you're not just smoking a cigar, you're embracing a legacy. Elevate your experience with Family by Loyalty Cigars. Get yours over at Toro Cigar Company and discover why we're changing the cigar game. There nice love that video man that's freaking bad ass i love that definitely can't complain right nice beautiful good music good good audio good graphics love it thank you family by loyalty thank you alan for everything that you do you guys do for us man we super 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 appreciate it before we get too deep into it though there's a birthday celebration i think we need to talk about there is there absolutely <laughs> is happy birthday united states navy october 13th 2024 the united states navy is 249 years old today Woo! go you navy know, go navy you know mike it's kind of cool that we're part of that legacy absolutely. it's not even kind of it's extremely cool that we can say we're part of that legacy absolutely that's freaking badass. 249 years. So next year will be 250 years. Hey, and just think, at least me and you were part of that Navy before they had stress cards. <laughs> <laughs> and timeout cards. <laughs> you hurt my feelings. Wow, there's a feeling for you. <laughs> timeout, company commander. I, my feelings are hurt. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm, I, I, hear, I hear those stories now, and I think back to like my time in, and I'm like, Man, what would have happened to me if I would have said something like that? Holy <laughs> smokes. <laughs> yeah, you know, we in the Navy, we call it the grinder, right? Fall out to the grinder, um, which is yeah. nothing more than a big empty parking lot where you do formations and things like exercises and drills and marching drills and stuff like that. But they call it the grinder because it's the meat grinder. You turn you turn people into raw meat by just exercising them until they drop out there. Why is the Navy turning for marches? Mar Mar well, <laughs> that's a great question, kid. Because you have the only time you ever officially march is at graduation of boot camp. But you spend the better part of boot camp learning how to march so that you don't look like fucking idiots on graduation day. Pretty much. I heard a I heard a story a long time ago about the Navy. I thought it was the funniest thing I ever heard, and it was a news story about two Navy um, in, uh, enlisted, I believe, who were lost in the desert. And I was like, "Damn, there's got to be a hell of a story about that." <laughs> they were in like enemy territory in the desert, like two Navy guys out there. Um, something went very wrong that day. <laughs> I can't, I can't even imagine. Although, you know, you'd be surprised at how many sailors are landlocked, how many careers. I met people that were doing 20 years and had never stepped foot, not served one minute on a ship. And to me, that was absolutely astounding. Hmm. A little disturbing, actually. You know, I don't, I don't even know if you can call yourself a sailor if you'd never stepped foot on a ship. Someone's got to hold the desk down. <laughs> someone, someone's got to do it. It's an ugly job, I guess. Somebody's got to do it. So, man, show. Let's 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 go around. What's everybody smoking this morning? I'm going to start. I I have the Dissident Soapbox. I love this cigar. It's a great morning cigar. I got it with my coffee here. My real Wawa. I got Wawa this morning. I don't know why I didn't get 
Squirrel Farms. I got Wawa coffee this morning. How about you, Jake? I'm smoking a blood of Vlad because I figured if we're going to do a man show, I got to smoke a manly cigar. And uh, there's really not a manlier cigar than something called the blood of Vlad. <laughs> that, that thing is a real banger. That's for sure. That's this a... is definitely, if you want a morning cigar to like pick your dick up and get you moving in the right direction, <laughs> this is the cigar to do it. That, that'll definitely pick your dick up. There you go. That's a I short. Have... That's a short right there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. I don't know if uh, YouTube will show it, but you know, I got the lawless. It's a foot band, but you can't really tell. Uh, it's got a picture of the skull uh, of like a goat or something wrapped in barbed wire. That's a pretty hardcore imagery. It, it is Black Label Trading Company. It, it is a fine cigar. I like it. A it lot. is a great cigar. I like the lawless. I I've had that cigar pretty regularly. It's, I like that cigar. It's a great cigar. James and the Black Black Label Trading Company did a great job with that all of their cigars but that one tends to be one of my favorite bltc cigars for sure well they have a variety so yeah they do they have a nice variety uh as does dissident great and and bamf so all three cigars oh great yeah bamf great, has great picks variety. this morning yeah absolutely uh okay so let's get into a man show man show man show we're going to talk about comments, guys. We're going to we're going to respond to some comments on YouTube that we've gotten. It's been a while since we've done one of these shows. I'm a little excited to do this um, <laughs> because we've gotten a lot of great comments, good, bad and ugly. And let's get right into it. Can you got one picked out right off the top? Um, let's see. Uh, so the very first comment I see is, is uh, uh, it's on YouTube. All of these are on YouTube. It says great and informative video. I like the advice on what to smoke uh, certain types of cigars throughout the day. I'm glad I found your channel. So um, that's like what we want to hear is that we're in, informing people of stuff they didn't know. I mean, nobody wants to hear stuff they already know. And uh, that's giving someone who's enjoying cigars a little bit of information which it takes so long to gather. You see people who smoke for so long and they get these little nuggets every now and again. It's like, oh, I didn't know that. I've been doing this for 10 years. I've been doing this for five years, whatever. Absolutely. That's a that, that's a great comment. Um, we get a lot of comments, a lot of positive feedback comments like that. You know, they love the show. They love the information we're sharing. And we really appreciate you guys stopping out of your busy day Take a minute, A, watch the show, and then B, you liked it so much you felt an urge to comment on it. So thank you, thank you, thank you for those types of comments. It's, well, it, for, for that one, uh, it, I just want people to know that it, I know what it's like to comment on YouTube, and you're kind of putting yourself out there a little bit. And especially if you don't like something and you're calling someone out, uh, it takes a little bit of guts. But if you're saying a compliment, if you're you're genuinely giving someone a gift because we do read all of these um, comments. They do all get read they nearly all get responded to. Some of them are just big old question marks. Like, I, do you know what video you're watching? But anyway. Right. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Let me see. So, hey, while he's picking it. No. Well, well, how about this? In case you're watching and you didn't understand what that comment was, that comment was actually, I'm willing to bet when we had Doc on here from GTO and he talked about how to smoke cigars, right? Start with a lighter cigar in the morning to wake your palate up. And then as you progress through your day, you can smoke stronger and stronger cigars, <clears throat> save the really strong cigars toward, for something to re reward yourself at the end of the day, and then finish the night again with a, a, a lighter cigar to relax your palate. And that's what that comment was from, how to smoke cigars all day long. So you can smoke 8, 9, 10, 11 cigars in a day and not blow your palate out. Ah, uh, that makes sense. I like that. I think that's yeah. it. I should have given a little context, but there, this next one doesn't, I don't think it needs too much context. Um, so this comes from at bitching about morons, but um, <laughs> <laughs> cigar lounges are the last bastion of civil discussion and taking the opportunity to understand another human. I will never stop seeking out new folks in new lounges. That is a great right there. That's right along the yeah, lines I mean, of the stuff we talk about. Go ahead. 100%. I mean, you should be checking out lounges, especially if you have the luxury to travel some more. 
go meet new people. You're never going to know who you're going to find in a lounge. And the cool thing about lounges is that most of them have great rules. So you can go in there and you don't have to worry about the bullshit going on in the world today. You know, you don't got to worry about the politics and the news and all that. Most of that's all banned. So you have to go in there and communicate like human beings over a cigar, which I right. think is awesome. Yeah, I love the I love the courtesy um, rules in a lounge. You know, don't be a dick. Rule number one in a cigar lounge: don't be a dick. I think it's a it's law. You have to have that as rule number one on if you post cigar <laughs> lounge rules. Don't be a dick. And if it's not a law, it should be. Um, but I, I like that a lot of lounges actually post their rules. You know, no political discussions. Be courteous. Be kind. You know. Yep. Um, don't turn the TV up too loud, you know, be respectful of the people around you. So I love that. So that's great. So I did actually figure out the comments, Ken. So I got one for you. Wait, wait, wait. I'm already uh -oh. on deck, butter. Okay. All right. All right. There right. we go. Here we go. Uh, so this one is a comment that's talking about a larger converse conversation about concealed carry. And um, <laughs> it's about the signs that you see on the door that said no guns allowed. And this person, uh, Connor Hart 7597, says there's nothing legally speaking backing up most of those signs. Government buildings is another story, but some boutique on Main Street? No, probably not. And this is a good example of using your mind to, 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 to figure out whether this is a uh, good comment <laughs> or a useful comment or, or something worth uh, you know, thinking about. Uh, a lot of people so get bad information. That's right. a dangerous comment in my book. Yes, I agree. Because, because depending on what state you live in, correct dictates does that sign have value. So, like in Virginia, for instance, where we all are, that sign technically would have to be posted on every entrance and exit to hold value. Once that happens, then that sign, if you're on there with it, it's considered trespassing. Correct. And you're going to get popped and you're going to have to deal with if they see it, they're going to have to deal with it. Um, so I think you better look at your own state's laws on how they regulate those signs. But yes, for the most part, most of those signs are probably. And a, a majority of states, have, and I've looked at it, most of those signs in majority of states are BS, but not every state. So I think you have to do your due diligence on where you live. Um and then you have to make the decision. Do you care? Right. So that's the thing I'll in Virginia, you. in, in Virginia, Jake's right in Virginia, if they post it and they post it properly in order for your concealed carry permit to be legal, you must follow that rule, right? If you violate that rule and it's posted properly, you can then be trespassed off the property. Uh, technically you're guilty of a misdemeanor. If you violate the rule, technically, most people don't get a misdemeanor charge. They just get trespassed and then you don't ever have to worry about it again. You just can't go back. But uh, if they don't post it properly, then you can fight it. It's that simple. But then you've, you, I think Jake was getting ready to say, you've got to make a decision that is an individual to carry, whether or not you're willing to follow that rule or not and take the take the heat if you get popped if you get caught you know that's that's a personal question well the key here is don't use youtube comments to direct your life <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> so that's, that's i, I do have another one but uh do you want to do yours or you want to do the next one the next one that i have is directly uh, direct response to this oh well mine's mine's go ahead with yours because mine's unrelated Oh, okay. This one says, um, and this one's silly. This is a silly comment. It says, open carry is a good way to lose your gun. The other guy sees you as a target for theft. And I can say for sure, if someone's stealing the gun off of your hip or, you know, out of your waistband, you're probably not ready to carry a gun with you. <laughs> <laughs> Mine with open carry is if somebody wants to start shooting, the first target they're going to have is the guy they see with a gun. So, I mean, I mean, if I mean, I guess if you think you're, uh, you know, Billy the Kid and you're that fast, maybe. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm a firm believer in don't let anybody know what you have until you need to. I, also, I, don't let them steal your gun off your hip. <laughs> so, so here, you know, here, 
here's the thing, you know, so open carry is a funny topic and we've, we've done a, a man show on just, you know, concealed carry and open carry and, and that stuff. We had a ton of great comments and a ton of great questions, but, but here's the bottom line. Open carry has a, has its place, right? It does act as a deterrent. Someone who walks into a seven 11 and sees one or maybe two other people, open carrying may choose to move on to an easier target. So I think there's a level of deterrent that, that can happen from open carry people, open carrying. I'm a big proponent of the second amendment. I love uh, supporting that. I think people ought to be able to carry in whatever manner they choose to carry, whether it's concealed or open carry anywhere they go, Um, I don't like the rules. I don't like the postings. I don't like, you know, not carrying in federal buildings. I get it. I understand what they're doing. You know, they don't want judges and and other people um, in grave danger, which could happen. Courtrooms are emotional places. Open carry is probably not the best place to um, to allow those emotions to be um, exercised in a in a bad manner. So I understand it. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I understand it. Okay, Mike, let's go over to yours. Okay, so my question, my comment, the one that I want to bring up is shout out to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hashtag (laughs) PS4L. Pittsburgh Steelers for life. Go Steelers. There there we go. I love that comment. Go Steelers. Even even though we're three and two. Today we're going to fix that, though. We'll be four and two today. So this next one, and just this. This may be the last one on the, the gun thing, but this one just kind of caught my eye a while ago. Um, it says, when you get guys with zero combat experience talking about combat, this is the end result, crying smiley face. Shotgun spread indoors is essentially zero. Dude has either never tested patterning or is just a conscientious liar. Wow, that is a bold statement. And that bold is st- on our best home Peter's- defense. Okay. All right. So I'm going to respond with that right out of the gate. Shotguns are the number one home defense weapon in the world. Nevertheless, the United States. And the reason is it's point and shoot. Instead of one round going down range, you've got nine to 12 pellets going down range at the same velocity and about the same caliber as a nine millimeter round. So this has been tested time and time and time and time again there's a ton of youtube video content on shotguns versus pistols or even rifles as home defense do your homework before you comment on our show please sir (laughs) did i cover it jake does that about cover it you got it oh yeah i'll leave it at that the bottom line is if you're not going to carry a tomahawk home defense system then you need to be working oh. on a shot, you need a shotgun right there I you mean, go tomahawk it, home defense system baby exactly right so i i will say this if you are unfamiliar with weapons if you've not carried weapons uh if you're not trained with weapons in any way shape form or manner and you need you feel to a need to purchase a gun for home defense I would strongly recommend a shotgun. Go buy a home defense shotgun. Go to the range. Do some practice. Get comfortable with it. Be safe with it. Secure it properly in your home and then use that. The only time I would recommend a pistol or a rifle for home defense is if you've actually been trained in some level of close quarters combat. Um, you've, you've taken specific courses that, that cover concealment and cover and the difference between the two and you understand how to operate your weapon in the dark otherwise i recommend a shotgun all right we got uh this is a this is a this is a dumb one we get tons of good comments uh, and this is kind of a dumb one this is uh from at green apple pie who i'm not sure even why I'm guessing it's a she is watching this, but it says, don't smoke on screen. It's gross to even see it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, okay. Here's my response to that. (laughs) We're a cigar podcast. What do you expect? (laughs) 
We are a cigar podcast. I mean, I don't. I'm not sure how you found us. YouTube thought you might like us, though. Hang around. You might learn right. something. Our our audience has um, commented quite a few times in response to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, read some of our uh, audience's responses. To let's that. see. Um, well, let's see. Some dumb comments are telling other people what to do and trying to make other. Others conform to your life decision and personal preferences is far more gross to see, in my opinion. You can literally watch whatever you want and close this. Or, uh, and you chose this. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, let's so let's go. Let's go. Uh, here's a comment from okay. one of one of our favorite people. Great show. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. And that was from a Toro Tuesday live. Um, with HDA cigars and Digger commented on that, so we appreciate it, Digger man. Thank you so much, guy. Uh, you're you're a fan of the show. We're a fan of you, brother, for sure. I didn't realize how many two A. I mean, the the, the two A discussion has got, <laughs> like half of our comments are about it. Right, I'm scrolling way down before uh, I'm seeing other stuff. Yeah, there really is a lot of 2A comments on here. We did have someone say, are you guys done talking about cigars? Because we went for so long <laughs> with so many other con uh, topics. For a while. I, I remember that. Yeah, we've actually ramped up a little bit more cigar content. I think Randon was the one who commented that one. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> so here's a good one. Here's a good one. Cigar right. lounges are the last bastion of civil discussions and taking the opportunity to understand another human. I will never stop seeking out new folks in cigar lounges. And that comes from I, bitching I, I, about Mike. morons account you know we already yeah. covered that that was like our second yeah, comment man that was our second comment come on <laughs> take a sip of the coffee get the wheels I'm half, running i'm, still, I'm halfway down the list sunday, sunday move sunday morning i'm still asleep we can we can cut out some dead air here if we run into it but i mean <laughs> the, the digger stuff was uh great i mean when you have a a former f-16 pilot on you get a pretty good conversation right going that was a great show i love the digger show man i think you know he was he was a uh, very charismatic um he was very informative and we learned a lot about what it is to be an f-16 pilot in the air force and i loved his story because he started out as enlisted he went back to yeah. college he got his degree and he ended up flying for the air force through the air national guard because of yep. the weapon systems that he wanted to fly and train on. And there were just so happens they were looking for more pilots. It was, he was in the right time at the right place and ended up getting an, uh, an offer to be in that weapon system. That was absolutely a phenomenal story. One of the best Definitely. we've ever had for sure. So one of the comments is don't tell them the urinal cakes taste like sugar. <laughs> Who the that Air was Force? off of, uh, let's see. Uh, that was that was from a digger podcast. Yeah, okay. I'm not <laughs> quite sure what the, the the context of that one is. Yeah, don't. Hey, it's pretty easy. Don't tell the Air Force that the urinal cake tastes like sugar, because you know it's like every sign is there for a reason, right? Danger, high voltage. Somebody, somebody had to learn that lesson the hard way. What else we got? There's oh, there's so many good comments. So many good comments. Another great video. My wife and I know uh, how we are voting, and I can say we've raised all of our kids right. And that was on our election voting rights um, podcast, where we didn't discuss politics, but we discussed your right to vote and and how you should exercise that right, regardless of who you're going to vote for, but be informed. And that's true today as it was when we recorded it a month or so ago, because the election cycle is right around the corner. Yep. What else we got? What else we got? got well, um, one has got to be roasting us somewhere. Well, yeah, that's what I was really looking for is a good roast, but it hasn't happened in so long because of uh, I'm not sure. Well, I got one that is from Best Little Studio, and it says it's a quote. Men need other men in their life. That's something that we said. Uh, such a true and simple statement. And he says recently divorced out of three handling my business. And sometimes I just need to talk to someone who knows. So. 
uh, that's one of the reasons we started this whole thing was to build a community of ideally we started with men but we are wide open to including women into that because women are a massive part of men's life <laughs> so here's a great comment and this relates to the best home defense weapon shotgun for ultimate safety this is brain dead do you cover that one already ken no go ahead no it just says this is brain dead from hh hill 5489 Oh, well, <laughs> that one needs some context, too. <laughs> hey, dude, there's no there's no context around. It. Just this is brain dead. OK, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> one of the other comments, one of the other comments was on get gun safety tips, protect your family and avoid tragic consequences. Short uh, was correct. Most homes offer no effective cover. And I will agree with that statement. It offers concealment, but not cover. There's two different things, right? Concealment is you can't be seen. Cover is you're safe from bullets flying through, penetrating whatever you're standing behind. That's cover. Concealment right. is you're just hidden. So you need to know the, the two. And, you know, most, most houses have uh, drywall. And that's not cover, ladies and gentlemen. That's concealment. Yes. It's a big, big difference. You just have to push the refrigerator out of the way and get behind the refrigerator. Then you got cover, right? And concealment. I think a, I think a refrigerator would be better cover than than most in most drywall for sure. I'm All not right, I'm I, not sure. Do we do what do we think, Jake? Nine millimeter round gonna penetrate an entire refrigerator to get to you? Highly unlikely. I agree. I agree with that. So um, uh, on our pairing, um, on a pairing podcast where we talked about pairing cigars with other things, someone says pairing it with triglycerides. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a fat joke, man. It's a fat joke. Uh, fat joke. Ha uh ha. -huh. We get it. We're all fat. <laughs> uh -huh. Funny guy. I thought people would be roasting us better than this. I'm, I'm just, I'm kind of surprised. We got guys. We your, got your, more roast. your roast game is weak. Yeah, yeah. The roast game is weak. we very early on in a podcast. I think we got to go way back to get some of the better roasting comments. Because yeah, we did have, we did have some very, very early on in the podcast in our shorts. We had a lot of roasting comments. Okay, so. uh Rusty Shackle Ford 8226 says, Cigars are the dumbest thing I've ever seen. You don't even inhale them. You're literally wasting everything. <laughs> uh, it sounds like someone doesn't understand how cigars work. <laughs> that That's for sure. That's a, that's a non-cigar smoker, um, you know, for sure, sharing an opinion. More power to you. Again, you don't have to watch our podcast, bro. It's, it's that simple. Keep, you know, swipe up, buddy. Yeah. S swipe up. Yeah. These guys look super healthy. And then, then there's a whole bunch of dot, dot, dots. Like he had something else to say, but didn't. Dudes can barely breathe. Every four words he's got oh. to take another breath. It might just disappear. <laughs> I think that's, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> it's, it shows a, a tiny signal on our uh, uh, Wi-Fi, but here he goes popping back in. That was when you had like a cold or some serious allergies going on and, yeah. and uh, you were struggling to stay alive. <laughs> yeah, that's never happened to Jake before. No, not at all. <laughs> no. Not at all. No. Yeah, for a while there, YouTube made the default comments off. I don't know it was because I don't know what that was all about. But it took a while to, to get that straightened out. It's still it's still not fixed. That's that's what we were working on this morning when you walked into the shop. Um, there was there was videos with no uh, yep. comments. Yeah, yep. comments hmm. were turned off. So YouTube is. You know, even though when when you hit publish, you have comments on it, publishes them with comments off. I don't know if that's just because 
this is a cigar podcast because of the content or or what but at the end of the day we've got to go back and turn them on so steven underscore harvey says regardless of whether i approve of smoking i do appreciate your passion and understanding for what you believe in always do what you love beautiful Great. comment beautiful great. absolutely great comment so whether yeah it's exactly right right this is america and it's a legal activity and you should be able to partake in any legal activity you so choose as an adult in america so uh max jr pile says light your cigar at the bottom of a steep hill and start walking up <laughs> That's on okay. um, turn a chore into a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, here's a here's the thing, right? There are plenty of people. I know plenty of people that smoke a cigar when they walk their dog. They smoke a cigar when they cut their grass. They're out. It's an outside activity. If they're outside, it doesn't matter what they're doing. Um, and you shouldn't be able to enjoy your cigar any way you want. And, you know, I think his comment was, you're going to be out of breath. But the th here we go with an uneducated comment again, because cigar smoking is not about inhaling. Cigar smoking does not impact your lung capacity at all. This is not a cigarette. This is a cigar. You do not inhale it. You simply draw it into your mouth. You puff on it and push it back out for the flavor. You're not inhaling a cigar. So that's an uneducated comment, period. 100%. Okay, so on turning a chore into hobby, we have uh, Armed Cracker, which is a great uh, YouTube <laughs> name. <laughs> love it, Armed Cracker. He says, mowing grass, yes, but I love being in my vegetable garden and smoking a cigar with a nice glass of bourbon. Now, this is a man who has arranged his life in the proper way. That's what I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, well, who's that? Brandon Marsh who posted that? Because... <laughs> He has a beautiful garden. He's got a beautiful garden. He shared it with us on a Toro oh, Tuesday. <laughs> but it, again, this is about, and Ken's right. This is someone who has taken the time to arrange a place where he feels most comfortable enjoying his cigar. So yeah. kudos, brother. Kudos. We, we might think that, that that might be a decent place to uh, wrap it up on this comment. Uh, I think that's a great comment to stop on. Yeah, that's fine. you know because because here's the reality, guys. If you smoke cigars, find a place you enjoy it. Find the people you enjoy to smoke with. Have a good time. You're not hurting anybody doing it. Enjoy it. Have a conversation. Yeah, you know that's what cigars are all about is the experience. And uh, you do you. And if you don't like what we're doing, hey, let us know. But the reality is, we just don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> No, we don't because we enjoy cigars and we're, this is a cigar podcast and we're going to continue to do what we're doing. You continue to do what you're doing and we'll continue to do what we're doing. That's one of the great things about America, brother. So absolutely. So we want to wrap it up or you guys, you guys want to talk about something else real quick or we, we want to wrap it up. I think we covered together. all the bases. Yep. All right. So. With that, man, we hope you guys enjoyed this show. We're going to try to do this a little bit more regularly. We've been a little haphazard with responding to y'all's comments um, on on a podcast, but we will try to do that more regularly. We enjoyed it. It's fun. It's fun reading your comments. We appreciate them, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So keep doing it. We certainly, certainly do appreciate it. Like Ken said, we do try to read all the comments and we try to respond, um, but life gets busy. If we didn't respond to you, our apologies. With that, guys, we hope you have a great week. Uh, always remember, be a man, smoke a cigar. We'll see you guys next week. Peace and love.